Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Rotem, and welcome to the Open Source Summit, Latin America. Um, in today's talk, I'll, I'll present you the building um, secure by design pipeline with an open source stack. Um, I would like to walk you through the process of building an end-to-end -end security uh, pipeline and, you know, and want to walk you through from misconfiguration in infrastructure as code to uh, YAML and to overlay permissive CPU limits and even securitizing between development and production. Um, we'll take a deep dive on how we secure our code and configuration, the pipeline itself and its integrations, and our Kubernetes deployment to ensure we have um, continuous visibility with the right monitoring controls right in place. Um, I will demonstrate it all with the common open source tool, of course, and, and a bit of uh, coding um, interface. So before we start, a um, few, uh, few points about me. I'm a developer uh, for the past 14 years or so. Um, in the past five years, I'm in the DevOps industry, especially a Kubernetes expert. And in my free time, my hobbies are yoga and watching uh, my favorite basketball team. So that's all about me. I'm working currently um, in Armo, which um, are the maintainers and builders of Cubescape, which is an open source end-to-end -end, um, Kubernetes security solution. We were founded in uh, 2019 and we're based in Jerusalem in Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, and, you know, let's just get started. So um, basically, a word without CICD is a chaos, as we're talking today. Um, DevOps and modern engineering have enabled us to provide higher quality code at the greatest speed uh, by introducing guidelines and check into automated continuous um, CICD processes. However, um, with the security becoming a more pressing matter uh, and more critical uh, zero-day traits arise, and misconfiguration is basically um, introduced through production uh, system and the same time application and development processes are moving fast forward uh, right in the CI-CD process. It's becoming critical matter, critical point for enforcing security during the CI CD pipeline and not just, you know, at the end as and the deploy uh, in our clusters, in our dev production environment. So I think we're all pretty familiar with this diagram, right? But as we are familiar, I'll go through in this talk about all the um, uh, all the phases and try to connect the security um, guide in there. But speaking of that uh, diagram that we are very much familiar, do we really know what the CI-CD goal? So I checked a bit and I found that the CI-CD pipeline goal is to reduce the risk involved in deploying software and plan our pro problems ahead. What does it mean to plan our problems ahead, okay? That means we will have problems, but we need to find that out in early stage of the pipe, in early stage of the deployment, in the planning, in the coding, and not when it's getting into production. And that talk will uh, focus on, on this topic mainly. And of course, reducing the risk, okay? I don't want to that the risk will be higher as I'm going to production, okay? We want to reduce the risk as the early steps are involved. So let's go on um, to our CI-CD pipe steps with some examples of which solution they are within 
uh, those specific steps. I'll go one by one and explain them. So source code, what do we have there? So there are basically two directions of uh, source code. The first one is the applicative code, the application code that we are writing. And the second one is the infrastructure as code. Okay, I combine them in this step together, but we'll talk about it separately. Um, as you see here in the icons, we have uh, Golang, Terraform, which is um, infrastructure as code, the YAML manifest file that we're deploying in our Kubernetes cluster, Helm, we're writing in the uh, Visual Studio code and any other IDs. Then we're going through and PRing our uh, codes to some kind of a repository, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, you name it. And then we're stepping ahead to the CI CD server. Okay, I just presented here the Jenkins and the GitHub Actions. Uh, there are a lot more. I will focus on those in this talk. Once I'm um, building my application, okay, in the CI CD server, I'm building and wrapping it as an image or a Docker image or any kind of image that I want to wrap that. Um, I want to put it in some place that um, I can just pull it from there when I need. And, you know, I'll save there the history if I want that or not. Um, so I want to put it in a repository, in a registry of artifacts uh, of all my images. There are uh, lots of um, examples here. Uh, we have it for the, the Microsoft one. We have it for the Amazon one, Docker Hub, uh, Harbor. There are a lot, many, many, many um, uh, registries that we can um, deep dive into them. And then we're getting to the deploy phase. The deploy phase is basically um, the phase that we're putting this image inside our deployment environment, right? When we want to take this image and um, deploy it in the cluster, in the Kubernetes cluster, if we're talking Kubernetes-wise. So we're deploying it with several tools. Of course, we have the Terraform that helps us to deploy that. Also the Argo CD, Ansible, um, and many more tools that are helping us to, to do so. And eventually what we want to understand is, is my application okay, right? Is it alive? Is it, it, is it increased uh, RAM or CPU or any other um, metrics that we want to monitor? And that is why we're using Prometheus and Grafana as its um, visualizer to monitor application. Most of the application has their own um, Prometheus exporter, and that's why that's how we are monitoring it. So what we're seeing here is basically a pipe, right, that helps the developer to rapidly deploy, right? They are just, you know pushing their source code and that's it, it automatically, right? It's right there in the production. I can trace it and see, um, you know, how how my application is going, right? Um, in a few minutes, I can see my application in production, even not in dev environment. So what developers are doing is basically shifting right, as right? we're going from the code to the, to the deploy part, to the monitoring even part. Um, but if I want to drill down, um, a bit more, I will present the, you know, the detailed pipeline that I created here. Um, it's just, you know, uh, a user flow that I created in, and we will talk about this user flow, basically the entire talk. We will focus on each and every one of those sections and see how can I, have the security um, inside this, you know, it's not a small pipe. So I want to have security in most of it or part of it, um, if you say. Um, so the developer right here is sitting and developing his code and then he develops it in Go or, um, or creating any manifest or deployment files to support his application. So he's, 
PR in the this code to his application repo and and PRing um his infrastructure is code to to that repo. After that, the application uh the PR is approved, code review, whatever, and then it went to the CI C D server, right? I can see here the GitHub action and Jenkins. I'm building my application and I'm uh, making all kind of uh, tests if you want. And then I want to push this image, this new image to the container registry. And from container registry and from the infrastructure as code is combined, we're going on just presenting here Argo. Oh, sorry. I'm just presenting here Argo, but um, basically it's, automatically deploying, um, taking the images, taking my uh, manifest and my Terraforms and deploying it in my Kubernetes clusters. Okay, one, many, it doesn't matter. Um, and eventually the user wants to see in the Grafana the, the metrics about his cluster, security metrics or any other metrics. So, Basically, um, I think that nothing can go wrong, right? Not. A lot can go wrong. Uh, we're talking now on, uh, on security uh, matter. So what can possibly uh, go wrong in this case? So again, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of points of uh, security pain points um that we can find in in each and every one of the stages i've shown before um code misconfiguration zero day cves dependencies management of course when we have kind of a collision third parties um that we're not familiar we're just importing it and we don't know which cves are there right i'm not very familiar with that um warnings does anyone pay attention to warnings? Even grammar warnings, we're not paying attention, right? There are many of us that are not paying attention even to grammar um, warnings. So security ones, hmm. um, third party object as we talked and ARPA configuration violation, et cetera, et cetera. And of course there are many more um, that this paper can, uh, can show. So I really don't want you to panic in when showing those uh, pain points of uh, security. And I'm basically here uh, to calm down a bit and to show you exactly where should I put the security guidelines um, and the security guards um, in this uh, pipeline and to keep me safe uh, as much as we can, of course. So, do we have a real solution? I think we're very close to that, okay? Um, but basically our solution is here to minimize the risk. Remember what's the CICD goal? To minimize, to uh, reduce the risk. Um, so let's drill down and see how we're going to do that. Shifting left. Okay, again, it's like a buzzword now um, in all the DevOps industry. Um, but what shifting left is? Shifting left term is the effort of a DevOps team to guarantee application security at the earliest stage in the development life cycle as part of an organizational pattern known as DevOps. So, if we saw before that developers are rapidly shifting right, then security is shifting left because we want to find our security issues in the early stage, um, in the early stage of our coding, of our planning um, right there. So why shifting left? Um, I, I, I think most of us um, are very familiar with this, uh, with this graph. This graph represents the software development lifecycle, um, SDLC. And 
it says that detecting bugs in a software lifecycle costs less um, as much as it's in early stage, right? So the cost is getting higher when it's in the in the last stage of the of uh, deployment. So that's exactly the same pattern in uh, in security, okay? When we're finding security or misconfiguration issues in the right side of the map, right? In the in the cluster, it costs us a lot more um, many days of uh, fixes to check all the pipe uh, from deploy to the code and see where to fix it. Um, then if we would fix it in the early stage, right? Early stage coding right there. I want to catch as much as I can, of course. Okay, as much as I can, I want to catch it in the early stage of um, of development, the, the feature, the application, the infrastructure is code. So now I'm going back to my diagram that, um, the user flow that uh, we talked about before. And because we're shifting left, let's start from the right, okay? We'll start from the right, from the um, deployment um, section from my Kubernetes clusters um, that you're seeing right here. So the deploy phase within the cluster, um, how can we discover uh, what's in it? What's the security inside my cluster? So we have two major points here. The first one is the vulnerabilities um, in cluster scanners. Okay, we can install and deploy the in cluster component that uh, recognize which vulnerabilities are standing in the in the cluster using SBOM um, and combining it uh, together. For example. I just run, um, like on a mini cluster, we just read this, um, the vulnerability scanner of Anchor, and that's what I got. There are many CVEs there. Some of them can be fixed, some of them, some of them won't. Um, and that's for another talk about how to prioritize um, the CVE. But that's like um, the first thing about, um, about vulnerabilities in scanner. And the second part of the deployment phase about the cluster is the misconfiguration. Again, we need to check it inside the cluster. So I'll present here um, Cubescape, uh, which also checks for vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. I'll check, I'll just uh, show you the, the result I just, scanned my uh, mini cube cluster. Very, very simple cubescape scan. And um, now I see that uh, my cluster was scanned. Um, those are all the controls, basically all the tests that um, I've seen in my cluster. If I put here uh, a minus V, then I can see it very in very detailed uh, view. I can see exactly um, which resource has failed on which misconfiguration. What is assisted, what is remediation? How can I fix it? Let's say um, I don't have uh, CPU limits in my uh, in my deployment, so I'm I'm going and uh, and uh, fixing that or um, I want to check the network mapping and namespaces without any service account, sort of things that are that can harm me in sort of ways in, um, in, in my cluster. Um, so here it is, we'll wait in a minute, it will uh, run. And in two minutes, we will have the, the, the data. Live demo. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is, for example, I see here that the resource 
um, kind service account and the name is replica set controller of the queued system namespace has failed, uh, misconfigured, okay, of data destruction. And what I see here is exact path of its failure. Okay, that's the basically the path of the YAML, okay, related object, rules, resources, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I see here all of that. There are many, many controls um, in my mini cube that failed. And again, in by the end, I can see the the summary of um, all the resources that failed and where the risk, which risk I'm standing. So I'm like in good shape uh, currently. So that's a misconfiguration um, check in my cluster. I ran it inside my cluster, my mini cube. So if we'll go back, um, we talked about the vulnerability in cluster scanner. There are also tools that are doing that, such as Claire and AquaTrivi, and the misconfiguration also uh, the tree MMK kit, and of course, uh, QBench by Aqua. Um, so there are tools that are doing that. Uh, so I recommend of using that. I showed you KubeSkip one, of course, you can choose um, here. So from deployment, we're shifting left um, to the container registry. Um, and what can I do in con container registry? I can basically just scan this uh, registry as I told you before. We have the Docker Hub, the Harbor, the ECR, uh, GCR, et cetera, et cetera. And what I want to do here is to scan this uh, registry before I'm taking this image into the deployment, into my cluster and see whether this image, after I build it, right? After, it's, it, after I have this image with all these uh, dependencies, um, is not vulnerable, okay? I don't have the, any CVEs or minority of, uh, of CVEs. So that's um, in the artifact um, section, the registry one. Um, again, there are some tools that are doing that, uh, Gripe, Cubescape, Trivi. Um, those are the tools that um, I mentioned that are doing that. Again, I'm, I'm trying to put here some tools that are um, only open source one. Um, so we can use it. And now let's move on to the um, CI CD um, server. Here I'm mentioning the GitHub Actions and the Jenkins. The process is well known. Okay, we're getting the, the, the code, we're fetching the code from the repo, we're building it eventually making some tests and then uh, putting the image in the container registry. Um, so what we, we have here, um, we have the GitHub action and the Jenkins job. Um, I'll focus on the GitHub actions here. Um, we made it also with Cubescape, also Jenkins plugin. Okay, we made a workflow um, for adding a uh, workflow and to uh, to the GitHub Actions uh, workflows that I'm running. Um, so I'm setting up the job. Um, I'm pulling a G the GCHR, um, checking out, installing Cubescape. I'm scanning the, the file and then I'm publishing and getting the result um, by the end. Okay, so that's for the, for the GitHub um, Actions uh, view. Also for Jenkins, okay, it's just an example for for that flow. And now we're really in the shifting left side, right? Um, now we will focus in code. Um, so as I said before, we have two branches, right? We have the applicative branch and we have the infrastructure as code branch. So in the applicative one, um, let's say I'm using the Visual Studio Code um, and I'm writing um, in Golang. So I need to find some way to scan my code and see that there are not any vulnerabilities inside. Um, and if I'm talking about the infrastructure as code, then I have my YAMLs, um, for example, on my Helm charts 
And I want to scan that and understand that um, there isn't any issues in my, in my code, any misconfiguration. So there are two ways of looking at it. We can look at that at the source code security plugins that I'm embedding in the IDE and the Git repo scanner, okay? When I'm PRing my, um, when I'm going to PR my code, then I want to check that I don't have any, any issues in this repo uh, before we're going to uh, merge it and going into the whole pipe. So one step before. Um, so in the secure source code uh, security plugins, I want to show you um, Cubescape plugin, um, which basically it's um, a YAML file of some kind of our application. And what we're seeing here is I installed the plugin, Cubescape plugin, and what I see is on the fly, by saving this file, I can see if I have misconfiguration in the file. I can see here which, um, which control is it, um, it's the NSA test, and the reason that it marked it is that there are no CPU uh, and memory limits defined in the container, and it tells me exactly what should I do. Okay, what's what basically the description and what should I do with that? And if I'm catching it that early stage, then it's not inside my repo. So I'm catching it in a very, very basic early stage. Um, it takes nothing to change it. Um, so that's the stage I want to catch it, okay? Um, the infrastructure, um, when I'm talking about infrastructure as code, well, that's the stage I want to, I want to do that. And, and for Git repo scanners, I want to scan the code, right? So I want to scan that uh, my uh, Go language, um, um, you know, if I'm scanning the applicative code, I want to scan that what I wrote in Go is okay, no CV is in that. And the other hand, if I want to scan the repo, okay, of my IAC, um, then I want to put my repo in GitHub, like Cubescape scan, uh, Cubescape repo or Helm repo, um, and then scan that and get the results. So those are two steps that are pretty much aligned. Um, I'm calling that as the source code, both of them, because we're at the early stage and that's the stage that is prior, um, prior the, the commit and the push. And that's the stage where it's a lot healthier to, uh, to have our security checks and here it won't cost us much. So, um, there's just. Another one that uh, we missed, which is the Prometheus exporter. So when I want to monitor my application, okay, um, there are many, many, many exporter uh, available for the cluster um, inside. And basically there are, we, we provide here the security um, exporter that checks the cluster in after basically the deploy phase, right? We're always checking if I still uh, have the same resources available, if the risk is still low or it's got higher. And then I can see some kind of a drift in the Grafana uh, view and see basically where I'm getting higher and when I'm getting lower, okay? According to the resources applied in my cluster. So we're getting into the end and I want to summarize that and show you that in each and every step of the way, we can have a security gate. Um, and the security gate stands in all of those uh, stages. Um, so we can really check different things. Why do I need all those security gates? Because I'm not alone in the world, right? Like if I'm pushing a code, or I'm writing uh, my code I and my friend is writing and we're merging to the same uh, branch. And I'm not sure he, you know, he installed the plugins uh, of the Visual Studio code and so and so. His code can be, you know, vulnerable. So I want to check it in that stage, okay? I want to um, check the repo after I pushed it. 
I want to check it in the test because I have some um, maybe more third party that are combined inside. After I'm building, I'm building with some third parties that are not part of my code. And then I want to scan and in the container registry to see if the image as a whole is secure and it's not vulnerable, of course, as much as we can. At the end, I still want to know in each and every time, what's the status of my cluster? So is it secure? Is it, I mean, is it the most secure that can be? Um, so the gate there is still persist and we need to check it every time. And Prometheus Exporter helps us with that um, because we can just rerun it all the time. The Prometheus Exporter runs all the time and says, okay, those are the metrics. This is the trend of your risk um, in your cluster. So I hope I didn't scare you. Uh, I hope I gave you the tools uh, for putting your security gates in your uh, CI CD pipeline. Again, we're talking here all about open source tools. So um, use that, just put it once and then you'll be safe. You know, you can go and sleep uh, very carefully uh, without thinking any more security. Um, so thanks a lot for having me here. Um, you can just contact me in each and every one of those uh, medias, uh, Twitter, Discord, uh, GitHub. Um, you can scan the QR code and just reach right out to me. Um, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this session.